Everyone, today is a very exciting day. Reason being, this magazine right here, Sports Review Wrestling, June 1990. Now, I know it probably doesn't seem like a big deal. It's just a normal wrestling magazine that has Hogan and Warrior on the cover. But it is a big deal because that was the one wrestling magazine missing to complete my 1990 year of sports review wrestling. So I'm very, very pleased that I have it now to go with the rest of them. So what does that mean? Well, maybe it means I'll do a look at the complete year of, of 1990 sports review wrestling. I don't know. Like, it's just, it's awesome that I finally have it. And I'm super stoked that it's in the collection now. Uh, I don't really, I haven't even opened it up yet. It's still in the, in the baggy and cardboard thing, which is ironic being I just did the video the other day on why I don't bag and cardboard a lot of my magazines. This will be opened. It will go in the pile because it's, it's got to be looked at. I have to look at them. You know how there's people out there who are mock collectors and Lucy's? Unfortunately, I hate that term. I got it from Zack Ryder and them on, on their stupid channel about wrestling figures, but I get it. Some people, you want to have stuff loose. You want to have stuff packaged. Well, the same for us magazine collectors as well. I like having some in the bags and boards. I also like having them loose so I can look at them and, and at any time I want. So this is exciting today. I ordered this on not even that long ago. I was shocked that I actually had it in the mail today. So that's pretty sweet. I'm guessing, I think it came from the same province I live in. So that's why it was so fast. But that is exciting. A little, little mail today that I did not expect. But I'm pleasantly surprised and happy to have this magazine looks like this would have been leading up to wrestlemania to have hogan versus warrior on the cover here it's like looking in a mirror i want to say that that cover there has to be from either a main event or a saturday night's main event i don't know though i'm guessing it's one of the two maybe the main event I think Warrior wore that outfit when he wrestled Dino Bravo for the Intercontinental title, I think. This was going, of course, you know, hyping up the Royal Rumble, their stare down that they had, and the, and the fact that they fought a little bit, and then going into WrestleMania six. That was a huge thing in 1990 for us wrestling fans. Were you Team Hogan? Were you Team Warrior? I don't, I, mean, I don't really remember looking back. I I think I would have been more so Team Hogan than Warrior. But at the same time, I knew Hogan wasn't going to win that match because the Intercontinental title was on the line, and I couldn't see Hogan winning that title. So I think it kind of, you know, sealed the fate that it was going to be the Ultimate Warrior winning that one. Even at age nine, I kind of figured that one out. Still, a great match it was at WrestleMania six, And this is a sweet cover. Um, not so much for the Hogan era. Hogan's got his back to the camera, but it's, it works to put the font, you know, on Hogan's back there then. So it doesn't ruin the photo overall. Looks like we got a Russell War 90, um, wild thing, action and drama photos from that pay-per-view. That would have been February of 1990 where Lex Luger wrestled Ric Flair. It was supposed to be Sting, as we all remember. Sting injured his knee at the Clash of the Champions which thus made a babyface turn for Lex Luger to go after the world title, even though he was in the middle of a good heel run as U.S. champion at the time. So, yeah, this is it. That's, I'm just excited to know I have this. I'm going to go chart it down on my laptop and complete that year, saying I have all the 1990 Sports Review Wrestling. That takes care of that chapter. And there's still a few I still need to get. I still need to get two PWI magazines from 1985 to complete that year. The one with, uh, I think it's 85. It's the one with um, the Von Erichs on it, like all of them. Uh, Carrie, 
uh, Mike, Kevin, and, and Chris, I believe is the one. And the other one is the uh, Great American Bash, 85 pitchers and, and such. <clears throat> and then I need one from 84 too still, the one with Kerry Von Erich with the NWA title on it. But hey, slowly but surely, right? I didn't think I was ever going to get this magazine, and it popped up on the Canadian eBay just the other day, and I bid on it. I got it for 10 bucks. It was, I think it was $12 or best offer. So I put down 10 bucks. It was 5 bucks shipping, and it was, um, the tax was like a dollar something, of course. So it came out to like $16 but and, and change, but man, it was so worth it. Can't wait to open this sucker up, look through it one time, put it on the shelf, never look at it again. And that's kind of what I do with these, right? No, I'm kidding. I do look at them. You know what's funny? I, I was talking to my girlfriend about this one night because she was asking me about the magazines because, you know, doing typical girlfriend duties of trying to show interest in what your boyfriend likes. And God bless her heart for that. You know, she tries. But um, she was asking me about them or something, and I, I brought up, like, because she said, like, which ones do you look at or well, which ones are you often looking at? And I go, well, take a guess which ones do you think I look at? And she said the Attitude Era, which, okay, fair enough, because that is the most popular era for wrestling, really, when you think of it, if you take out the 80s, like the Hulk Hogan, WrestleMania 1 through 3 era, if you look at the Attitude Era, the the Austin Rock Era, of, of 98 through 2001. Yeah, that's a pretty popular era. But no, I told her, ironically, the only wrestling magazines I find myself going to to look at when I'm bored are the ones I had as a kid, which is true. And I think the reason why is because of the nostalgic feeling of it, of looking at the mag. Like I can remember when I look at a magazine I had as a kid, I can remember like, a moment in time when I was, you know, eight, nine, 10 years old, sitting on my living room floor at a certain spot, looking at that magazine. So it's just a real feel good feeling that I get when I look at the ones I had as a kid or even a teenager, the ones I didn't have that I always wanted to have. It's cool to have those. And I look at them, but all I get for a nostalgic feeling out of that is the cover. It's like, I remember seeing this cover in the wrestling magazine and always wanting this magazine. Well, now I have it, but I don't got the same memories of looking through it. Like the ones I own, right? Cause I didn't have it as a kid. So yeah, it's weird to think the ones I gravitate to the most are the ones I had as a kid, but I guess it's just, that whole memory thing, right? That, that feel good moment that you want again, that you had as a, as a kid that I guess it's that innocence feeling of like nothing else matters at this moment, but what you're doing, there's no stress, there's no work, there's no money issues, there's no health issues, anything like that. For the most part, a kid is just a kid just living in the moment. And I think that's why you see a lot of us guys who are anywhere between 35 to, to 55, we're reaching out for that again. We're trying to grasp it as much as we can. That's why we collect wrestling magazines or video games or action figures or in Dave Batista's case, lunch boxes. If anyone's ever seen that video online, Dave Batista collects old lunch boxes from when he was a youngster and, and the ones he always wanted as a kid that he saw his friends have and such, right? So there's just something about when we get older, we try to collect things we always wanted as a kid or had as a kid to kind of bring back that, that innocence that we miss. And it's, I don't know, man, it's just, I'm sure that is like something that a psychiatrist would have a field day with us people who are like holding out and looking for this old retro stuff that somehow we still need to have in our 30s, 40s, and 50s. And I don't know why. I'm one of them, right? I do it too. So I can't explain it. I just can't. I, I think everyone out there who watches this, who who does their own hobby, who collects what they collect from when they were a kid or something, you guys get it too, I bet. Because it's just a weird feeling. I can't explain what it is. And the only thing I can think of is just the innocence of, of what we had when we were young. And... Now we're trying to bottle that up again and, and hold on to it. But 
Unfortunately, father time clicks down every day. We are not getting any younger people, unfortunately, but I guess that's why now we try to just grab as much as we can from our past and our youth to enjoy now. And there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. All right, that was kind of a weird turn, right? That was a <laughs> I took a deep dive into a weird like philosophical is philosophical a word? Philosophical? You know what I mean? I can't think right now. I need another cup of coffee. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I just it's weird how I went that road, but I think everyone out there probably gets it who watches this video and um, whatever you guys collect, let me know in the comments if you guys collect um action figures or comic books or even stamps all right like <laughs> just let me know i want to know what you guys collect because maybe maybe we have a connection with that too right maybe who knows like i i collect vinyl records i collect masters of the universe toys i i collect care bears okay a care bears because i remember it when i was a kid care bears was a comforting show i watched before going to school in the morning so I still hold on to that stuff to this day. So yeah, let me know. And uh, hey, until I do my next one, I'll talk to you guys later.